Well, welcome everyone who is here this evening. We're really excited to, to host this all about the application um, kind of conversation webinar about um, about the application. Uh, my name is Caitlin Wilkins. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at Vermont Academy. Um, and we're super excited that you are here. So thank you for taking some time. Um, this is meant to be really comfortable conversation opportunity for you to learn from our director, Nora. Um, about the application, what to expect, have questions answered. Um, I will be moderating the kind of tech side of things. So message me um, or put anything into the group chat if you need anything as we go. Um, and thank you to everyone who submitted questions ahead of time. That was super helpful for us to have a sense of what's on your mind um, and kind of the, the things that, um, that you'd like us to talk about or help address. So Nora has those. And um, if you think of any things as we go and put them into the group chat or message them to me directly. Um, and we'd, we'd love those thoughts. So thank you. Um, and I will pass things off to you, Nora, um, our, who is our director of admissions. Thank you so much, Kate. It's wonderful to be here tonight. Thank you all for giving time from your day to join us. Um, as Kate said, this will be a very informal, comfortable conversation. I do have a presentation that will move through pretty quickly. I want to prioritize time for you to be able to ask the questions that are most pressing for you as you navigate the application process. Um, just by way of introduction, my name is Nora. I'm the Director of Admissions. Um, I am also the assistant coach for girls JV soccer. I am a ninth grade advisor. I am a dorm parent in Doc Brown, one of our smaller gender inclusive dorms. Um, I'm the parent to a current junior and a recent BA grad. And my husband, Sean, is on the math faculty. And I share this with you, um, firstly, to let you know that I am all in at BA. I love it here. My family loves it here. Um, and we want to spread that contagious joy for the school to as many people as possible, but also because just as we look for students who are multidimensional and who have many different interests, we want the adults in our community to be visible as multi-layered adults and humans for our students as well, so that they can see us lean into our areas of interest and engage with the aspects of community life that we enjoy the most. So that being said, let's start talking about the application process. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. There we go. And take us through a little presentation. Just a second, let's make that big for us. Okay, so this presentation will be all about the application process. And while much of the information is specific to Vermont Academy, I'm also happy to speak to navigating independent school applications and admissions processes in general. There are some tips and tricks that I'd love to share with you, and I'm sure you have questions as you start working through applications for all of the schools on your child's list. Let's get started with the VA specific material. This year, we have a really exciting option, um, early action. This timeline allows students and families who know that VA is a school that you love and that you'd love to become a part of to submit your materials by January 1st and get a decision both on the financial aid side and the admission side by January 15th. So that is quite a bit earlier than in the regular process. One way that Vermont Academy is a little bit different from some other schools that might have an early action option is that this decision is non-binding. We want you to know that, yeah, we totally see you here at Vermont Academy. We would love to have you join our community. And we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to look at all of the information at your disposal before you make a commitment to VA. A small school like Vermont Academy works best when everybody wants to be here and wants to spend time together. So we wanna make sure that families and students are being very intentional in their school selection. So when you submit your admissions materials and your financial aid applications, you will receive your decision by email on January 15th in the early action timeline. And then you have until April 10th to confirm enrollment. That would be by signing the enrollment contract and submitting a deposit. Okay. Next 
next up, we have our regular decision timeline. This is the one that you may be familiar with if you've been through the application process to a boarding or independent school with another child or have friends who've gone through it. In this scenario, your applications, both admissions and financial aid, are due by February 1st. And then on March 10th, you will receive your admissions and financial aid decisions by email. In this timeline, you also have until April 10th to sign your enrollment contract and submit your deposit. Okay. So those are the two different timelines we're looking at. Really, it's a personal and family decision to decide which of the two processes you want to engage in. Um, certainly, you know, students who are really motivated and who would like to use this holiday break time that many of us are enjoying um, to really focus on their essays and wrapping up their application, that might be a scenario where early action is the best fit for your child. However, if you want to take a little bit more time, certainly the regular decision timeline is one that is also, you know, equally valid. So in the application process, step one is to take a campus tour and interview. We would love to have you come to campus. Um, the interview is a required step for all applicants to Vermont Academy. We recognize because we welcome students from over 21 countries around the world, not everyone is able to come visit campus prior to submitting an application and the rest of the pieces. In those cases, we do offer virtual interviews and in order to schedule that or to schedule your campus tour and in-person interview, you would contact our admissions office, either at the phone number listed there or at admissions at vermontacademy.org. Um, Vermont Academy is the kind of school <clears throat> where once you step on campus, you really get a feel for what our community is like. We, during your campus tour, we will have you matched with two of our admissions ambassadors. Those are current students who just love the school and want to be a part of sharing their love for the school with prospective students. They will give you a tour of campus and answer any and all questions you might have. Afterwards, you have the opportunity to interview with an admissions counselor, as well as for the parents to have questions answered by another member of the admissions staff. It's a very personalized tour, so we'll wanna get a sense of what your interests are, whether those are academic, athletic, artistic, um, if you started a club at your current school that you're really wild about, we'd love to talk to you about what that might look like on our campus. Really what we do is we try to connect you with the important people on campus who are likely to be part of your support team once you get here. So that might be a specific coach, might be a faculty member, might be someone from our Center for Learning, or it could be someone from our music department. We want to make sure that you have the opportunity to meet the people who, when you come to VA, will become an important part of your daily life. Next on the process timeline is submitting your application. So again, if you are applying early action, that application is due by January 1. And if you're going with the regular decision timeline, February 1 is the application due date. We do accept applications through two different platforms. One is the standard application online, and the other is gateway to prep schools. Both are applications similar, if you're familiar at all with the college process, to things like the common application, where you can apply to multiple independent schools at the same time. You have to make sure that you've designated Vermont Academy as one of the schools on your list. And then as you submit pieces to the online portal, either through Gateway to Prep Schools or the standard application online, those pieces will populate on our end and we'll be able to keep you updated on which pieces we may still be waiting for or which ones have been received. You can find links to these applications on our website under the admissions tab. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us and we're happy to direct you to the appropriate resource online. At the same time that you're submitting your admissions application, we invite you to submit a financial aid application if that's going to be a piece of your school decision process. Um, the application for financial aid will be due at the same time for the admissions application. However, the two applications are reviewed separately by different committees. Um, so it is possible that you could receive an admissions decision that's a big yes, and then a financial aid decision separately that also offers you financial aid based on the need that was demonstrated in your application. Your financial aid application is the parent financial statement 
which can be found in the SSS family portal. That's a platform that is available. Again, you can link to it through, it's linked in our website under admissions, under the Affording Vermont Academy tab. There's a direct link to it. You will be asked to submit documents like tax returns, um, some other pieces of financial information. And essentially the parent financial statement will calculate your estimated family contribution. This is what the algorithm thinks that you should be able to contribute towards your child's education. Now, we are humans in our office and we know that the algorithm does not always provide space for nor capture the information that's really um, you know, important for your family as you're making financial decisions. So if you feel like there's a special circumstance or something that was not captured through the parent financial statement, we always invite you to send us an email. You can send it directly to me, Nora Doc, um, explaining any extenuating circumstances that you would like the financial aid committee to be aware of as they review your financial aid application. So you've completed both the applications and now you are submitting the applications. For your admissions application, the pieces on this slide are what are required in order for the admissions committee to begin their review process. Those include the candidate profile, your student essays, and your parent statement. I know we have some questions about the student essays and the parent statement, so I will make sure after I go through this list to touch back on those two points. Um, your school report with transcript. If you are applying for a grade other than ninth grade, we would like to see all of your school record, your academic records, your grades from every high school grade level that you have taken so far. We'll also ask for a current English teacher recommendation as well as a current math teacher recommendation. We would love to review a personal recommendation if you have a coach or a community member or a mentor who you think could really shed some additional light into who you are as a human in this world, we would welcome that. Um, and then of course the application fee is another required piece of the application. Um, when students are thinking about writing their essays, what I would most like them to know is that the essays give us not just insight into your writing abilities, but also into who you are as a person and what's important to you. One of my favorite questions through the standard application online is what three adjectives would you choose to describe yourself? And this is one of my favorite ones because I love to see the wide variety of responses that students give. Um, some students you know, might choose adjectives like dependable, reliable. Others choose things like sarcastic, irreverent, quirky. And what we like to see is a real balance in who you are as a person. We want to know how you really feel on the inside um, and what you want us to know about the way that you wish to move through the world. Similarly, the parent statement gives parents the opportunity to really share with us, with the admissions committee, um, factors and aspects of your child's character, of their previous educational experiences, of your family life that you think are important for us to take into consideration. It's of course a wonderful opportunity to kind of brag on your precious child, it's also an opportunity to share with us areas in which you would like to see them grow or where you think they would benefit from support. I don't know a single child worldwide right now who hasn't had a disrupted learning experience to some degree over the last two years due in part to the global pandemic. The parent statement will have a specific question that allows you to describe how did the global pandemic impact your family and in particular, your child's learning trajectory? Did they have to transition from being in person to being fully online? Were they no longer able to participate in the extracurriculars or the clubs that were so important to them? Did they miss out on important socializing with friends? Um, this is an area where you can really highlight the aspects of life at an independent or boarding school that you hope will improve your child's educational experience moving forward. So that's the application pieces. We also recognize that some of these pieces are out of your direct control. So things like English teacher and math teacher recommendations and transcripts, those are pieces that you need to request early um, if you are hoping to make the January 1 deadline. If you've already requested those items and they haven't been received by us yet, 
please feel free to reach out either by phone or email and let us know. In some cases, depending on what we do have on file, we are able to initiate the review process while we wait for the outside entities to submit the missing documents. So please don't stress too much. Just let us know what's happening and we'll do our best to make sure that you get a complete application review on the timeline that you're hoping to follow. Okay, next up, we are test optional. Um, like many institutions, both in higher education and secondary education, we recognize that it's been really challenging and difficult to schedule some of these standardized testing options. Um, we also found once we made our process test optional, we really didn't lose out on learning about our candidates. Um, through the student essays, through the interviews, through the recommendations and parent statements, we were able to glean the information that is most important to us as a community. Um, we're very proud of your child's test scores. If they did an exceptional job, please send them to us. We'd love to celebrate along with you, but we don't require that you submit them. Um, if you are applying to ninth and 10th grade and you want to share your scores, we welcome your SSAT or ISEE scores. And if you're applying to 11th, 12th, or PG, we would love to see your PSAT, SAT, or ACT scores, should you choose to share them. Um, next up, if you are a student who has a 504 plan or an IEP plan in your current school, our Center for Learning would be thrilled to review the accommodations that you receive and any testing on file. Um, the Center for Learning is a fantastic resource on campus for all students. For some students, they will be working directly with a learning specialist in order to receive support in areas of specific learning differences or overall executive functioning. Um, we really appreciate that we are able to extend these services to students and families, and we ask that you share with us as complete information as you have so that we can connect with you and let you know how Vermont Academy might be able to support your child. For my students who are international students, we do require a test of standardized English proficiency. Um, these days, Duolingo tends to be the test that gives the most flexible scheduling. It also gives you very quick results and it tends to be one of the more affordable testing options. So we are more than happy to receive your Duolingo score reports. Um, this applies for students who live in a country where English is not one of the primary languages and or who have not attended a school where English is the language of instruction for the last three consecutive years. So I know we have many applicants who come to us from Canada and we love our neighbors from the North. If you are attending a school that is an English language school and you live in an area that is also French speaking, we would just ask that your school record reflects that you've attended school where English is the language of instruction for three consecutive years up to the time of application. Many times we get asked about what is the minimum threshold for test scores? Um, and it will depend on which test of English you are submitting. In general, we are looking for students who are entering at the ninth grade level to be at the equivalent of a intermediate, or if you're familiar with the CEFR scale, a B1 or B2 scale. This means that you are comfortable having conversations with peers, asking to have your needs met, writing simple papers and reading with some degree of nuance in the target language. Students who enter at this level will be enrolled in our English as a Second Language program. You will be taking the majority of your core courses in English and you'll have supplemental ESL classes that are a separate section for both English and history. Um, at Vermont Academy, you have the option to graduate out of the ESL program on a per trimester basis. So that's really wonderful for students who arrive in September and start thinking and speaking in another language all day long, and they're exhausted and a little overwhelmed. But by week six, they've really gotten into the rhythm of it. And now they're starting to dream in English and make jokes in English. And that's when our ESL instructors say, hey, I think you're ready to jump into the mainstream classes. Um, we do offer students the opportunity to opt into ESL as well. 
And that will be confirmed by a placement test when you arrive for international student orientation a few days before the rest of our student body. Next up, the exciting day, either January 15th or March 10th, you will learn by email uh, about your admissions decision. And hopefully at that point, you will say, yes, I can't wait to become a Vermont Academy Wildcat. And this is a picture from our Wildcat games this year. This is our one of our great campus traditions. It's a spirit competition we have. Uh, students are arranged by grade level and they compete in all kinds of extra fun and kind of silly challenges like slowest mountain bike race, human hungry, hungry hippo. There is a speed puzzle challenge, many different ways for students to compete in kind of a friendly way. But the overarching reason behind it is that it really helps students become very comfortable being silly around one another. We are all about community and Wildcat Games is a really great way to not only meet your classmates, but also to learn about their special skills, um, to cheer alongside of them, and also to kind of become very comfortable being your authentic self in front of one another. Um, and I love looking at this picture because I can see a lot of my young friends from the start of this year, and already I can see how much they've changed between that first day of school and when we just left for winter break. So it's really fun to look at. Okay, after those decisions are announced, the next step in the process is please join us for a revisit day. We will offer those um, in March and April, and they are an excellent opportunity for you to come and see campus. You'll have the opportunity to see the classroom environment, to see the the other facilities on campus to really connect with current students and meet current faculty. Once you've decided that VA is where you really want to be, you can secure your spot by signing your enrollment contract and submitting your deposit by April 10th. So next up, <clears throat> this slide is really um, trying to answer the question, what is the admissions committee looking for? Um, when we are reviewing applications, sure, we want to see a strong transcript. We want to read beautifully polished essays. We love glowing recommendations. But above and beyond that, <clears throat> what are the characteristics that we're looking for in a student who we hope will join our community? Some of those intangibles are things like intrinsic motivation. That means that you have, you as a student, you have identified something that you're interested in. Maybe it's a specific goal. Maybe it's an extracurricular. Maybe you love building your own gaming computer. We want to see that you have set a goal for yourself and you've started figuring out how you can work towards that goal. We do not expect that you are, you know, an expert at every area of interest you have. We fully recognize that students who are coming to us are adolescents and they are in the process of growing and trying and having setbacks. And we welcome that. We want to make sure that they have that little spark of curiosity and that the students who join us are willing to put in the work to help achieve their goals. We're also really looking for kids who are kind. Um, we look for kindness in many different areas. Certainly, you know, how are you interacting with people when you come to campus? What can you share with us about maybe some community service projects you've been involved in? Um, what about, do you just take care of your siblings after school because your parents are working? We want to hear about that. We want to know if you are a foster for puppies or kittens. We want to know if you do tutoring or mentoring in the kindergarten class in your old elementary school. We look for all signs that a student is nice. Um, we are really a place where we welcome kids who are nice and we want everyone to be authentically connected to one another and to be open to meeting the new people who join our community each year. Um, we are a small school, but we have a lot of big resources. So we have 200 students and those 200 students can choose from a wide array of both elective classes, advanced classes, um, activities on the weekends, afternoon activities each trimester. You could decide, even though you've been a hockey player your entire life, you might decide you wanna try rock climbing in the spring, or maybe you wanna do our wilderness exploration or mountain biking team in the fall. We welcome students who really want to take advantage of the many different opportunities that are available to them here and who are excited about having new experiences. 
Um, we really are looking for students who want to be seen and known. Vermont Academy is a community where students and teachers and staff members, we really spend a lot of time together <laughs> um, and we're really looking out for one another. It is not a great place if you are looking to be a fully independent person. Um, we want you to grow into independence, but know that along the way, adults in the community are gonna be there cheering for you. They're gonna be supporting you when you need help and they're going to be monitoring you. They're going to be saying, oh, you know, I noticed that Amalia seemed a little bit sad last month. I wonder if it's related to the fact that, you know, she didn't get that student government position she was hoping for. Ms. Wilkins, can you think of another leadership opportunity that we should suggest she go for? Adults in the community are really looking to identify what are the strengths of each student and how can we push them to work at their growth edge and take on some of those new challenges? Um, it's a great place to explore and grow. And it's a wonderful place if you're a student who above all values community. So many of us in our disrupted educational experiences of the last couple of years ended up being a little bit isolated from one another. And one of my favorite parts about being at Vermont Academy as a staff member, an advisor, a parent, is that I really feel like we are all a supportive community for one another. Um, this is a place where by the end of the first week, you're gonna be pretty much knowing everybody on campus's name. Everyone says hi to one another as we pass in the morning along Long Walk. And you'll notice that at lunch times and community meeting and community events, everyone is just really happy to be in a shared space together. So that's a little bit of some of our desired characteristics for Vermont Academy Wildcat. Those are the things that we're looking for beyond the transcript. You'll notice that the first bullet point in that list is upward trend in academics. And what I mean by that is um, it's okay if you are not a straight A student. If you are, that's awesome. I'm really proud of you. Um, if, on the other hand, you've had some hiccups in your transcript, we want to see that you are working to bring those grades up. That's where we're going to look at teacher recommendations to see also what feedback they give. Um, if there's a class you struggled in, let's say it's math, but your math teacher says, man, Lily came to office hours every day to ask questions about the material, and I could tell she was really working hard to get it. Well, that carries a lot of weight for us. And we wanna know that you are developing your self-advocacy skills. Overall, we wanna see that um, your transcript indicates that you are willing to work to raise and improve your grades if they are not exactly where you want them to be today. Okay, I think we'll move past this. So that's kind of the end of the official presentation. I'm happy to address questions now. Your next steps, we would love for you to come to campus and schedule your interview. Um, that can be on campus. If you're able to visit, we would love that. If you need to schedule a virtual interview, we're happy to accommodate that as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing right now. Let's see if I can pull this off. Hooray. Okay, and I am happy to start answering some questions. Ms. Wilkins, do we have any questions to address at the moment? Um, I think one question that we do have coming in was about um, reclassifying yeah. and what that means or reclassifying mm -hmm. or repeating and kind of yeah. is that um, is that common? How does that how does that work? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so reclassifying or repeating is a term that you hear most often in the independent or boarding school landscape. And what it means is that a student who is joining an independent school or a boarding school may decide that they're going to do the grade level they most currently completed again. There are a couple different reasons for doing this. Sometimes a student who is coming into ninth grade might say, hey, I would like another year in ninth grade to develop either emotionally, socially, or maybe academically. So a little bit of a pause and reset. Other times, students might decide to reclassify at a higher grade level, let's say 10th grade, because they're hoping to opt into a higher level of course challenge, right? So they might decide that they're going to reclassify as a 10th grader in order to start taking advanced placement classes that may not have been available to them at their previous institution. 
Um, many times our international students who are coming to learn in English for the first time may decide that they would like to reclassify or repeat a grade level because they may be familiar with some of the content knowledge in that grade level, but this allows them to get settled socially, physically, um, as well as to focus on developing language skills while still being able to demonstrate academic success in their first year. So those are a few of the different reasons that students and families may decide to reclassify. Um, sometimes families worry, well, what does that look like in a college application? How are college admissions officers feeling when they see a scenario where a student has reclassified? That's an area where at Vermont Academy, our college counseling staff is really great about explaining in the counselor letter that they write, what were the reasons and motivations for reclassifying? Um, the transcript will indicate which previous credits carried over to Vermont Academy, and then they'll be able to set it within the larger context um, and really speak to what goals the student had set for themselves when they aimed to reclassify and how they were able to achieve those when they came to Vermont Academy. Um, thank you, Nora, that's helpful. Um, and I also, um, a quite following up with that, kind of how common would you say it is for Vermont Academy or kind of independent schools in your sense of it? Yeah, I think, you know, it, it kind of varies. I will say that um, it's something that we've seen more recently become a little bit more common over the last two years. And I think partly that has to do with students who did not have an awesome experience learning either fully online or in a hybrid model and who said, hey, I want to go to a school that will give me a restorative experience in terms of my athletic goals, my community goals and my academic goals. And in order to put my best self forward when it comes time to apply to colleges and universities, I'm going to opt into the reclassification op uh, opportunity. All right, oh, I see a couple of questions in our Q&A. Um, this is a, a great question. One is how does the school handle orientation for incoming students, activities, et cetera? Um, so we invite our students to join us if they're joining us at the start of the school year. Um, students who are participating in fall varsity sports like soccer are often invited for a little bit of preseason training where they get to um, work with coaches and other athletes. And I will say that we invite any athlete who aspires to be on a varsity team to join us for preseason. Um, it is a great way to try it out and see if it's something that you're really interested in. Um, we also invite our international students to come a few days before regular registration. This allows for students who might be dealing with time differences, climate differences, certainly food differences and eating habit differences. It gives them the ability to really start to feel like they have a foundation before they start meeting a large number of other students and get into some of the more specifics about, you know, um, community expectations and class registration, gives us the chance to take them to Target, to buy a comforter, um, to make sure that they know how to use their cell phones so that their parents aren't worried that they haven't heard from them, and really to give them a complete campus tour since many of them haven't had the chance to come to campus before that registration day. Um, apart from that, the rest of the community will join us generally on a Saturday. Uh, the other populations join us on a Wednesday and a Thursday. So then the next Saturday, the rest of the school joins us for registration. We have um, a great kind of fair where parents and students get to connect with the different offices on campus um, and make sure that you get your ID photo taken you know how to connect with health services, you've talked to the registrar and reviewed your schedule, you've got your dorm keys, you've moved into your room, you've met your roommate. We offer a wonderful lunch for everybody and families to hang out together and enjoy the beautiful outdoors. Sometimes there are games and music. And then by about three o'clock that afternoon, after a welcome from the head of school, we say, thank you so much, parents. Please go on and enjoy the rest of your day. We've got it from here. And that's where we start really um, taking care of the students that you have trusted us with. Um, for activities, there are a number of different weekend activities that are offered through our student life office every weekend. They're optional. 
um, which means that students have a little bit of agency in terms of determining what their weekend schedule might look like. Um, so, and this is an area where day students are always invited to participate in weekend activities alongside boarding students. We are primarily a boarding school, but we also really value our day students and we want them to have access to as much of the community as our boarding students do right up until it's lights out and it's time for them to make their way back home to you. Um, we do have a couple uh, optional trips that happen before the start of the school year. One of them is a hike along the long trail. One of our earliest headmasters helped found part of the long trail. Um, and we every year have a group of students and faculty who will go on an extended um, multiple day hike about along about 40 miles, I think, of the long trail. And it's a great opportunity to meet new students and bond. This year, we had a student who was totally new to the community decide that they wanted to participate in the long trail hike. So that's a really neat opportunity that we offer. Um, go ahead, ahead, Kate. Sorry, one thing I was thinking about with yeah. that question was it reminded me when we're thinking about orientation and, and registration that a lot of that as a new student the most important pod within that is advisory yeah. um, and kind of what that i um, wondering if you can kind of just touch quickly on that because it ties into that orientation to the school absolutely yeah thank you Kate for bringing that um, up so every student at Vermont Academy is assigned to an advisory your advisory group consists of your grade level peers, usually around six grade level peers and one to two faculty or staff members. Both Kate and I are advisors. I work with our ninth grade ducklings and Kate works with some 10th graders. Your advisory becomes your family within the larger fabric of the Vermont Academy community. We meet three times a week, anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes each meeting. An advisory is the place where we do not only academic check-ins, you know, individual check-ins, we also do some social emotional learning. Um, we have kind of a larger curriculum that as advisors, we all work through. Um, it's also a place where we do fun stuff. We go for hikes, we have dinner, um, we play board games. My advisory just paired with a senior advisory group and they taught us how to play a really fun board game together. Um, sometimes we play yoga ball soccer, uh, ninth graders this year, the whole grade level met in advisory, and then we were taken on a hike to some of the important places on campus, our beautiful 450-acre campus, by the, our director of place-based learning, led us and really taught us what was important and connected to what traditions in the community, different spots on campus. The advisory groups during orientation also get together to kind of process and debrief what we've been learning. It's where we go over the um, student and family handbook with students in a small setting so they can really ask detailed questions about what does dress code mean? What is lights out? Uh, but what if I sleep through a class? What happens then? That's where they can really start delving into some of the really specific questions they might have about what it means to be a student in a community like Vermont Academy. It's also where we do some community service during orientation. Um, our advisory groups generally do community service both on campus and in the village that we are a part of. We often serve some of our under-resourced neighbors by you know, helping prepare them for winter and weatherization. The local Montessori school often benefits from some cleanup from uh, Vermont Academy advisory groups. It's a great way for us to be out and visible in the community and really let the community know that we are so happy to share space, to share the land with them. Thanks, Nora. Mm -hmm. um, pulling one of the other questions yeah. from the Q&A, um, wondering what the VA experience looks like for students at the postgraduate level. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so a postgraduate year is intended for students who have already completed grades nine through 12 and they know that they would benefit from another year before launching into college, university, or whatever is next for them. There are a few different pathways that you can take. Um, sometimes students are interested in a postgraduate year because, especially recently, you know, they might play a sport and they had to miss out on a season or two of playing the sport due to um, you know, it not being offered during the global pandemic. And they want an opportunity to really continue to play and perhaps be seen and recruited for college level placement. 
That's one way that students decide to engage with a postgraduate year. Another option is for students who say, hey, I really would like to um, be a pre-med major. I just realized it. I think my college application would be strengthened if I was able to do an independent study or take more coursework like advanced biology, kinesiology, um, you know, calculus. Some of the gaps in a transcript that can help prepare a student to be the most competitive for their college dreams. Um, it's also a fantastic option for students who say, you know what, I'm not ready to go to a residential campus like college. I would like the opportunity to go to uh, a boarding school to get support in learning how to do things like um, figure out how I balance academic, athletic, and social obligations all at once. Um, or to say, hey, I want to take a another class in entrepreneurship so that I can really write an amazing essay for my college applications. Um, students interested in a PG year, they are taking the college writing seminar that all of our seniors take. This is alongside of the PG seminar. It really helps them to develop their writing skills with the purpose of completing college applications. Um, it also gives them the opportunity to connect with faculty members, to live in a dorm, they're expected to participate in afternoon activities and all community functions the way that any other student at VA is. All right, um, one question, what day would registration be for a day student? I think I can all answer that yeah. same day as boarding students, everyone um, chooses between two dates. So that's um, one thing. And then a question about do Gateway, uh, which I believe Gateway to Prep Schools and the SAO have different applications? I wonder if they meant different questions. Um, so they, the question, they are very similar. They are different application platforms. They are soliciting the same information and the same required pieces. So Vermont Academy identifies, you know, these are the pieces that are required in order for an application to be complete and reviewed on our end. And then each platform will put those pieces out and make them available to students who designate that Vermont Academy is one of the schools that they will be applying to through that specific platform. Perfect. Um, oh, we have a question. What is the dress code? <laughs> I love this question. Um, so I will start by saying that when we say dress code at Vermont Academy, we are not talking about a school where a blazer and tie is required. We don't have a uniform. Um, the dress code is rather a set of guidelines that allow our students to, you know, be fully active in the community. Um, and to be present in classrooms and to express themselves, but within some basic guidelines that we all agree to adhere to. So in general, the big no's, and these are the ones that we, our students um, sometimes like to ask clarifying questions about or provide some um, challenging perspectives for. One is no hooded sweatshirts in the classroom dress. And that means during the day when you're attending your um, community obligations or, or academic obligations, no hooded sweatshirts. If you're going to athletic practice or if you're in your dorm at night, you can totally wear a hooded sweatshirt. I don't know a single teenager who doesn't have at least 10 hooded sweatshirts in their closet <laughs> right now. Similarly, athletic pants, things like sweatpants, training pants, um, those are not classroom dress, nor are athletic slides. So, you know, the Adidas slides, the Ugg slides, um, everything that all the kiddos are wearing these days, those are great for in the dorm and in your free time, but not for math class. Some other general guidelines are that we would like for students' torsos to be covered from the neck down to about the hip bones, um, to not have gaping armholes. We try to have a gender neutral dress code that can apply to all of our students of all sizes and all gender presentations. The full diagram and list of clothing that is appropriate and inappropriate can be found in the student handbook. What we observe is that um, we have students who can adhere to the dress code and still present themselves in many different aesthetic choices. So we have students who feel very comfortable wearing pressed khakis and a polo shirt every day. 
And then we have students who like to explore fashion a little bit more and who might be more comfortable, you know, presenting themselves in a way that might traditionally um, seem like it's a little more fashion forward. So there's really a broad range of what qualifies as dress code appropriate. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's great. Um, I haven't seen any other questions coming in and we're okay. right at 6.45, which was our kind of window. Excellent. Oh, we, have, we do have a question about um, how does laundry work? Excellent. Um, laundry is one of our favorite things for our proctors to teach <laughs> new dorm residents about. Proctors are students who have applied for a leadership position. They are on each floor of the dorm generally, and they act as student leaders who can really be the first resource for students who are new to the community and have questions like, hey, where do I do my laundry? Every dorm is equipped with communal laundry facilities. Depending on the size of the dorm, we have a big range and size of residents on campus from you know, a, a big traditional multi-story brick dorm to a charming white farmhouse um, and more home style dorm facilities. Each dorm has laundry machines in it and students are taught how to use them. They also get some of those kind of finer points of information about, hey, what do I do if I really wanna put my clothes in the dryer, but there's already a glob of wet clothes in there. Those are some of the things that we talk about as we learn to live in a shared space with one another. Um, but essentially every student has access to not only the facilities to do their own laundry, but also the training and guidance should they need it. We also have a laundry service for students who would like to have their laundry sent out and cleaned by a company. There is an outside entity that will work with families to collect laundry um, for a fee. All right. Um, I want to be mindful of our time. We have two more questions that came yeah. in. Um, and then I think after that, we can also, you know, yeah, if anyone has questions or sure. we can also take them via email or call any time, but yeah. what is the typical size for the incoming sophomore class? Oh, goodness. Um, this year, I think our sophomore class is right around 50 students, more or less. Um, our freshman class tends to be a little bit smaller than other classes, and part of that is by design because we really want to provide our ninth graders with um, kind of a wraparound experience that provides them the opportunity to really gain foundational skills in community living in each of our four pillars, um, which are independence, ingenuity, community, and a love of the land, um, and to have some signature experiences unique to that grade level. That cohort tends to be closer to 30 students. And then by 10th grade, we are often welcoming up to 20 new students in that grade level. So I would say somewhere between 45 and 50 is a typical size for the sophomore class. And the other question is about the food on campus. <laughs> um, so this is where I wish I had one of my student ambassadors so they could give you their answer and I'll give my answer. We have a fantastic dining hall. Um, our dining hall often serves produce and meat and fruits and other staples that are sourced from some of the amazing farms that are in the area. So we're really excited that we get to serve local farm to table um, ingredients as much as possible. We always have a salad bar out. Um, there is always a protein bar because we know that growing young bodies sometimes really need to eat a grilled cheese sandwich before they head to their class. And that might be outside of our hot food service windows. Uh, we do offer standard meal service in the mornings for breakfast, generally from about seven until 8.30 at lunch starting from 11 until around one o'clock. And then in the evenings um, around 5.30 to seven, there's a little bit of a shift there sometimes depending on the season. Um, during those times, students can expect that there will always be a vegetarian option. There will be a gluten-free option. Um, there will be a non-pork option. Um, and there's usually a good variety of types of cuisine. We have a really great chef who invites students to be part of the food committee. And the food committee, along with our diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging committees, will work to make sure that the menu reflects what the students want. And sometimes that is you know, a matter of personal taste. Sometimes it's a matter of reflecting the cuisine and traditions that are important to a student from their home culture or country. 
And we want to make sure that as much as possible, we're able to share those traditional recipes or celebratory foods with the community at large so that we can all get to experience Ethiopian New Year together um, for some of the other cultural events that have resulted in really amazing menus for the rest of us. Um, I love the food here. I will say that if you ask a student what their favorite meal is, invariably they will say wildcat mac attack, which is when we have a mac and cheese bar, right? Uh, mac and cheese, they love it, with um, a lot of different toppings that you can add. So the toppings range from, you know, things like green onions to bacon, kimchi, sometimes there's lobster. Um, lots of different things that you can add to your mac and cheese. More often than not, they really like adding the chicken tenders to the mac and cheese. So kids are generally happy, I think, with the food options. Um, and if there isn't something that you love being served in the hot meal service, there is always the soup, the salad, or the protein bar so that you can build your own delightful meal option. My favorite feature is the, the app um, so that oh, you yeah see ahead of time what's for meals. So like when I want to take my advisees out for dinner and yes. we're planning what night we're going to do it, we can make sure we don't do it on like their favorite meal night. Yes, so that, that that's so true. <laughs> oh, well, good. Well, I think this was, we had lots of great questions. This was, um, this was great. I'm excited to see so much engagement and hopefully mm -hmm. this was helpful for everyone um, to have some, some information and and everything. And we can certainly, um, we'll be doing one of these again. So if people have questions, we, we will kind of probably offer this as a series. Um, but we are obviously always available. Um, so please, you know, we're, we are an open door and we, we get calls like these often. And it's my favorite part of the day is, is so don't hesitate to, for, for families to know that piece. Um, but yeah, anything else, Nora, as we wrap up? No, thanks so much for your attention and for all the great questions. Um, we're, we're really happy to see that, you know, your, you and your kids are really thinking about what it would mean to come to a place like Vermont Academy. And as Kate said, we welcome continued conversation and curiosity. So please feel free to reach out with any question. Um, there are no small questions. They are all important to you. And so we want to make sure that you have access to the information you need as you navigate the process.